Okay, so I've got the notes from the first time that we've talked about this, the whole backstage pass, kind of create a video blog idea. But before we get started, now that we've got the crew here and involved in everything, I guess let's lay the framework for why you wanna do it right. and what the key to this whole project is gonna be. Sure, right. Um, so like, first of all, what is the idea behind or the purpose behind giving people a behind the scenes look at creating board? first thing that I want to talk about for sure is just the sharing of the journey because there's so many moving pieces and like just great little pieces of information that you wouldn't know unless you were behind the scenes uh, and then you know I really want to show a like a, a really objective way to like all the way through the process I definitely want them to hear some of those conversations with the designer and how we kind of go back and forth and jive on developing a game and then especially because I think art is so important you know, you've got those three things that you have to nail in a game, which are the mechanics. Like if the mechanics aren't fun then and good, then a game's just not gonna make it. If it doesn't have a good if it doesn't have good art and good theme, then that's a very important key factor. And then, you know, three has gotta be fun. So I think if we can focus on those three things and show how we try to bring those three things out in a game, um, this will be it'd be really fun to, to to show and share with everybody. Okay. Your your whole plan here is to let people in on how we do it and then wait and see you know what the success is is it as successful as grim is it more successful what are we learning that we didn't know last time and just kind of have them be able to see all of that raw and exposed yeah I, I, for sure because we're definitely not experts <laughs> right so just getting along the journey and seeing that they're going to see a lot of mistakes you know they're going to see things that we're still we're still filling out and trying to figure out because this is only our fourth game and so uh, we're still babies in this process. Some of the main parts um, that you mentioned last time we talked was you wanted to cover game signing or game signing with Scott mm -hmm. and then cover art for sure, um, choosing graphic designers and specs, yep. Yep. marketing and Kickstarter even if all goes well and then even play testing and development. Yes, yeah. So I, I think uh, there's going to be a lot of interest in a couple of those pieces as far as like the interaction between the designer as you develop the game, um, the art, how you drive that vision of what you have in your head down to paper into actually production, and then the setup for Kickstarter, and then the execution of the Kickstarter. So I really hope we can literally take the game from an idea or a prototype that I played at Gen Con with Scott to here's a finished product and they get to kind of see bits and pieces along the way. And I think it's going to be fun. I think people are going to like it. It's just different. Hello, Scott. Hey, Scott. It's James with Druid City Games and Kelby's here with me. How's it going? Hey, Scott. Hi, James. Hi, Kelby. Awesome. Hey, we've actually got the film crew here and we are working on the Sorcerer City documentary and wanted to kind of go through how me and you met and talked about this game and, and really dove into it. So uh, do you have a few minutes? I do. Awesome. So, you know, I know we'd worked together and we had considered signing the game Tori that you had designed uh, and we had done a little right. development and had some back and forth there. Um, but, you know, you reached out to me around Gen Con and said you had some more games you wanted to show. I, I remember we sat down, we sat down at Gen Con, uh, had a quick lunch and played Sorcerer City. So wh why did you, what was some of the reasoning behind, you know, you wanting to reach out to us? Why did you think Druid City Games was going to be a good fit for Sorcerer City? Uh, for, for several reasons. Um... I certainly was watching and admiring Grim Forest and all the passion and energy and enthusiasm that you had around that project. I mean, the game looked fantastic. Um, I haven't played it yet, but it, it, it looks fantastic and you got a lot of great buzz. Uh, so that's so I was like, wow. So you you you, you definitely know what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> in terms of you know what you mentioned, Tori. You know, we we had some back and forth on several of my designs and. So I feel like I knew you, and I was certainly interested in working with you and finding the right project. And I was really, I'm really excited about Sorcerer City, you know, so I, I wanted to show it to you. Sure.
want to go to Alusa or Heritage? Uh, I want coffee. Coffee? Coffee it is. Coffee. So like one of the things I was really worried about when we were, we came back, like I was very concerned because he had mentioned there was multiple people that uh, were interested in the game. And I knew it was such a good game that I knew why they were interested, right? I mean, like, yeah. cause it's such a good game. Um, and it was one that he had, it was so fleshed out. Like it wasn't, it didn't need a lot of extra work put into it. It was gonna be fine like it was. And so those don't come along very often. And so when he said there was multiple other companies looking at it and he had other prototypes out to other people, I really was like, all right, come on, come on, Scott. Let, what do you, what do you want? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what do you want? What do you want? What do you need to do to make this happen? Um, and I know, you know, one of the things that he told me was that um, he was really excited about, that we were excited about that theme. And from working with David Kegg and uh, Damien on other projects, I knew they'd be a really, you know, really good yeah. fit for, uh, the art that we want to do in the game. And uh, I'm a big fan of high fantasy. I love wizards and Harry Potter and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I didn't want to retheme it into anything else. And so I know he was really excited about that too. And so those things kind of just kind of lined up really, I think for the most part, but man, I, you know, there was a couple weeks where I, I, I didn't know if we were going to get it. You know, I, thought it might go somewhere else. And that's one of those things you just have to go to the next game if you don't land something that you're really excited about. But yeah, and you never know who the other players are. You just yeah, sit you never, and hope that or, because you're on the same team and you love the theme just as much yeah. and you're not trying to change everything about what they came up with that they, you know, I choose you. <laughs> right. Ideally. Yeah, because everybody offers a different package and different ways of doing things. So, uh, you know, somebody might have a way better you know, mousetrap than we do, but uh, we can only offer what we offer and uh, luckily it all worked out. We're gonna take you guys into Heritage House. It's one of our favorite places to come hang out as a small company. We uh, do a lot of small coffee shop type things and we spend a lot of time here. And so we're really excited about showing you guys some Sorcerer City so that you can see why we're so excited about this game. So come on, let's go check it out. Yeah, well, a little bit. He's mostly just getting me in line talking about it. We're gonna be doing. We're filming a documentary on making board games. So, since this is kind of like our second office, I was like, "Well, we're going to Heritage House." We appreciate it. Cool, man. I need to. Can I get two of the small dark roasts? And then I definitely want a piece of that brownie over there. The brownie. Yeah, it looked phenomenal. No so. one's gotten the brownie all day, but it. That's that's cool. their loss. Yeah, I think so. my gain. That's very true. This is legit. Can we tell me to save our piece? She better get back over here. <laughs> That's not happen. Okay, I'll go ahead and make it. Like, that's her piece. Are you eating for pain? No. So we are sorcerers and sorceresses, or wizards dresses. Sorcerette. Or gender neutral, we're just magician people. And so we're gonna be building our city, and we start. We both start with the same starter deck of tiles, and when we turn the timer over, which is two minutes, so it's not frantic at all. It's, you have plenty of time, until maybe you get to the fifth round, but you'll, you'll see why. You flip this over, we'll start with whatever's on top, and we'll place it down and you're going to go through your stack and you're going to make connections and you have those three shields that have the different shield types. You have the shield bonus for all the shields that's around the shield. You have shields that are three in a row or in a row. You have to have at least three to qualify it. But you could get, if you could get all of this purple in a row like this, that would be one, two, three, four purple that you would score at the end of the round worth of in that particular shield. If there's no shield, there is no scoring. So the shields do all of the, trigger all the scoring. Then there is the cluster shield, which is this. The cluster shield is gonna show you that anything that you can connect of that color will score. So if it was like this, that would be a at the end, we would score this shield of one red, two red, three red, four red. You have a cluster of four. 
And you, any way that you can make that work as your tiles are being flipped over, it's totally up to you. Okay, so that's, those are your three shield types right there. You've got straight lines, you've got shields that are touching other shields, and you've got clusters. Okay. Okay. Then we're going to have... But it also has to be orange shields, right? Mm -mm. What does nope. the color mean? The shield bonus is just any shield touching it. Like this shield would count touching it. So you, potentially you could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You could have nine, including the shield that is there. So regardless of color, however many shields. So like if that's a shield, yeah, regardless of color or direction, direction doesn't matter at all either. So, so like, why even put the red dot in the middle? Why they... Because that is going to score you in the red column. So you have these four columns okay. that you're going to be scoring. Magic, influence, victory points, and money. We use magic, we'll convert it, and I'll show you how that technique works in a minute. You have influence, which scores you the influence bonuses up here for the first five years. You have victory points, which are obviously victory points, and you have money. And money is how we're going to buy the tiles that we want to go into our deck for the next rounds. Okay. So we need the money to buy the tiles, and then they have the costs up here on the left-hand corner so that you know how much they cost. Just because I think it would be useful to know, do you know the idea or the reason behind setting it up as years rather than naming it rounds? Yeah, so it's the thought of like building and then rebuilding the city over a, a period of time. So we're like, we are, you know, reconstructing the city in our vision to make it bigger and more grandeur. Yeah. And what are the dots on the back of these representing? It's just prototype stuff, so nothing. Other than nothing relevant, huh? Nothing anymore. It used to be a thing, but we got rid of that. We'll also have monsters that come into the um, at the end of each year, and so the monsters, like I'll just explain to you the dragon. So it'll get mixed into our deck. You'll have one. You'll have to pretend like there's nothing on the back of these because this is a prototype. But when these come out, I'm doing things. I'm building whatnots. Oh no, dragon! I have to put it beside something, and whatever I put it beside, it destroys that tile and takes it's it out of the game. Color match a dragon. No. Mm -mm. Nope. But that's our first year monsters will be dragons. We're playing five years or five rounds and we're competing in influence for these bonuses each time. So whoever has the most influence in, who is in first place will get the victory point bonus and the influence reward. Whoever's in second place will get to choose one of the two and then if we had more than three players they would get money and an extra purchase at the market because you are capped when you go to this market to buy. You're going to use your money that you make from building your city between each round to buy these tiles to upgrade what you're making. We have big stacks and they're divided into low cost, medium cost, and upper end cost. There's also these wild tiles that are always available that you can put in that count as any color. And this is the cost, right? That is the cost. These are the costs associated. And these are the abilities. And there's some really cool abilities that are mixed in, too. Like, if you get this one, you can choose any reward of the four at the end of each round, as long as you get that into your city at the end of each round. Huh. So, okay. pretty neat. Uh, we got our victory point tokens. And then these are the monsters that are going to be coming up during the game that will be mixed into our sets. So we've got dragons, skeletons, giants, and goblins, but I'll explain those as we get to those. That's all you need to know about for now. But for now, the start, starting round, let's go ahead and play. We'll flip this over. You'll have two minutes, more than enough time, and we'll build a city. All right, here we go. Go. Oh, I got some red, yellow. I talk a little bit while I play this game. Sometimes cussing because you get the thing that you don't want. All right, so a cluster. Yeah, I want a cluster of yellow. Oh. It's gonna be in three, a cluster of red. Oh, shield, oh, shield, shield, red, no, yellow, yellow. I don't wanna end it yet. Okay, I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna put this down here. So don't... Round two, ready? Go. Oh, uh, yes. Like that. Okay, combinations. Combinations. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, dragon. Um, I'm gonna put it there and it's gonna destroy that. Okay, now the dragon in the, the color that it is does matter after its effect goes. So, whatever you end up using it for, you're gonna want that in your life. Um, I'm gonna do that there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Let's do that. But it doesn't have the color match, right? 
And so you just put that down, that's gonna kill that. Okay. Whatever you put inside. So it gets removed. It's gone now. <gasps> yeah. So nope, it stays there. You can still put something there later. Okay. And connect it. Bloop. And no, no. This is sad. Last one. Oh no. Oh yes. Yes. Victory. Get up off my city, lady. Mm. <laughs> no, there's I'm not going to move that. You're just going to have to work around it. You can just lay it on top of mine if you need to. It's getting close. You better hurry. Oh, you've got plenty of time. Okay, done. Cool. So you've got, I've got one, one, two, three, four, red, one, two, three, yellow, uh, one, two, three, four, five shields on this red, one, two, three, four, there. Uh, one, two, three, four green shields. One, two, three, four red in a row. A uh, cluster of red. One, two, three, four, five, six. Jeez. Yes, ma'am. One, two, three, magic. Magic was pretty terrible, but everything else was solid. I think this is going to be a sorry round. Okay. So a line of three red. Yep. One, two, three. Yep. Um, a cluster of red. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six, seven. You get those two. Uh, so that jumps you to 10. Yep. Use. Maybe not. Okay, so this killed that. Yep. Um, this is useless. Nope. It's got one, two, three shields touching it. So it qualifies. It gets three. Three green. Yep. Okay. And you got this, this one up here. So do this one. Uh, one. one, two, three. Yep. Three money. That. Um, it killed. It didn't kill it, but it's not green. Right? Correct. That didn't qualify. Uh, Line of three, one, two, three, four. Yep. Five. No, that's not a line. So that's not a straight line. See how that goes around the corner? So you got four that are in a row. Correct. And then I think you skipped this one. So you've got one, two, three, four, five more red because of that red shield. So you did did quite well yourself. So again, now we would go to this point. You've got four magic. I've got three. So what do we want to turn it into? I have 19. You have 15. You technically could only tie me. So. If I want to have that by myself, though, oh, I do. Maybe. What or is, don't I? Uh, I don't know. What does the red one stand for? Influence is who wins first place on the influence track for the victory points and the rewards. Okay. Okay, ready? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. You will not take it from me. I have 22. <laughs> so I have first place, so I'll get nine victory points. And I get to give away a monster. Don't do it. Oh, uh, which are this time the skeletons. So there's your skeleton. And I am going to give you my skeleton. You're welcome. Now we spend our money at the market and we start round three. Uh, you got second place. So if you would like to, and I need to mention, we have an Autumn, Autumn player here that in the first year it simulates a third player. And so you would shuffle these up and flip it over. Oh, we forgot to do this in the first round. So, ha, ha and four. So that wouldn't affect either one of us. And so at the end of year two, we would shuffle these up, and this is a pretend third player has 13. So luckily you have 15, I have 22, so this is still the third place. So you get to choose. Do you want to give me a monster, or do you want the nine victory points? Does it have to be a monster from the deck, or does it? It's from your city. Yeah, it's from your city. And my other option is? Nine victory points. I'm going to take some victory points. Okay. So you're going to jump up to 12. All right, I'm going to buy things. So I have seven bucks. Oh, man. Rip. I'm going to buy this. And I'm going to burn. I don't want you to get that. So I'm going to burn that. All right, your purchase. What you going to buy? Is this supposed to move based on the nine that I just drew? Nope. What you gonna buy? You only got three bucks, so you're gonna buy that one. <laughs> you need more money next time. Yeah. 
And all right, and then that would be it. We would go to round three, and we'd have round three, round four, and round five, and then you total up all your victory points and you see who wins.